everyone in this episode i'm going to talk about how you can integrate facebook authentication in blazor web assembly applications first i'm going to create an app on developers.facebook.com which will give me an app id an app secret id and this is what we're going to use in our project we'll add those keys in app settings.json file on the server side then i'm going to install a package called as microsoft asp.net core authentication facebook and then i'm going to make some code changes in my startup class to enable my app for facebook authentication once i'm done with that then i'm going to add a web api call in my controller which i'm going to call it as facebook sign in and i'm going to call this web api from my client side to actually log in with my facebook user in my placing chat application once we follow all these steps, then we should be able to log in with our Facebook user in our Blazing Chat application. So let's go ahead and make some changes to integrate Facebook authentication in this app. To create a new app, I'm going to go to developers.facebook.com and click on my apps. Here it will list down all the apps that I have. Let's go ahead and create a new app here. When I click on create app, it's going to ask me what kind of app that I want to create. You can manage your business integrations. You can connect to a game or have a connected experience. I'm going to select something else and click on continue. And then that's going to ask me the name of my app, which is going to be placing chat demo. And then I'm going to click on create. It's going to ask me if I'm a bot or not. I'm not. So I'm going to check that checkbox and click on submit that will create an app for me i can go to its settings it has advanced settings and then you can also add products to it and we are going to need to add a product which is going to be facebook login so i'm going to click on setup and then that's going to add that facebook login product in my app i'm not gonna set my settings from here i will do that once i'm done with entering my privacy policy and terms and condition that you can do it from settings and basic tab it will take you to a page where you can see your app id and app secret id you can see your app secret id and app id and these are the things that we're going to use in our project to integrate facebook authentication we can't turn on the app and listen until you enter the privacy policy and terms and services so let's grab those from uh, termsuite.com i created a uh, privacy policy and terms of condition in the last episode for my twitter authentication i'm gonna grab the same privacy policy and terms and conditions and put it for my facebook app too and you can also change the icon i'm gonna select my here's drive icon so that it looks nicer and once i'm done with that then i can save the changes and make my app live and then i can select the category of my app which is going to be education actually and then switch mode and that will make my app live there's one more thing that i need to do i need to go to my facebook login and tell what should be the redirect uri so that my asp.net core authentication facebook package knows where to redirect to and this is going to be https we are working in localhost so i'm going to say localhost 5001 and it should be forward slash sign in dash facebook and if you set this redirect uri then your package knows where to redirect to and get the token and then go back to the application with the token so that we could authenticate our application with uh, with facebook and i'm going to save these changes and that's all i need to do on developers.facebook.com i can grab my app id and app secret from here and we'll use this in our project to integrate facebook authentication To get started with making code changes, first I'm going to need to add two keys in my app settings search JSON on the server side. For that, I'm going to go to my server project and find my app settings search JSON. And in app settings search JSON, I'm going to add two keys which are going to be Facebook's app ID and Facebook's app secret key. 
and I can assign these values from the app that we just created. So I'm going to grab the app ID from there and assign app ID field. And then I'm going to grab the app secret key and then assign the app secret field here. Then I'm going to need to add a package, which is going to be Microsoft ASP.NET Core Authentication Facebook, which looks a lot like Twitter package. So I'm going to copy this line and paste it here and, and add Facebook's authentication package in my server project. I'm going to need to rebuild my project so that I could use some of the extension methods from this package. I'm going to stop the project and rerun it. Once the project is rebuilt, then I can go to my startup class. And just like we added Twitter's authentication services in my server project, I'm going to need to add Facebook's authentication service too. For that, I'm going to grab some code and paste it here, which will add Facebook's authentication services in my project. And it will take app ID and app secret key from app settings and assign it to Facebook options when we add Facebook's authentication services in our project. Then I'm going to need to add a web API, which is going to get called from the client. So whenever user wants to log in with their Facebook account, they can call that web API. For that, I'm going to go to my user controller here. And just like we added Twitter sign in in our last video, which was calling HTTP context challenge async with Twitter's default authentication scheme, we're going to need to do the same thing for Facebook. So I'm going to change the name here to Facebook sign in. And I'm going to change the function need to and we're going to need to use Facebook's default authentication scheme. We're going to need to bring in a namespace for this. I'm going to hit control dot and add a using statement. And then I'm going to need to add a button on the client side, which will call the web API that we just created here. For that, I'm going to go to my login page. And just like we have this Twitter sign in button here, I'm going to add another button, which is going to be for Facebook. And I'm going to change its style to it's I'm going to call a different local method, which is going to be Facebook sign in, not Twitter sign in, you know, just Facebook sign in and also change the text of the button. So it says Facebook instead of Twitter. Then I'm going to need to add a local method, which is actually going to navigate to Facebook sign in instead of Twitter sign in. So I'm going to create a different method, which is going to be Facebook sign in and which is going to call user forward slash Facebook sign in. And that's all you need to do to integrate Facebook authentication in your WebAssembly application. Let's rerun our project and see if that works or not. So currently I do not have the Facebook button. I'm going to refresh my page and apply the changes. Now I have the sign in with Facebook button. I'm going to click on it and that's going to call the web API and that's going to ask me if it's fine for this app to access my data. And I'm going to continue as for hard because that's my first name. And then it's going to log in with the email address of the Facebook account that I just continued with. So this is how you can integrate Facebook in your Blazor WebAssembly application. If you have any questions, you can ask those questions in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me on Twitter or Facebook. In the next video, I'm going to talk about how you can integrate Google authentication in Blazor WebAssembly application. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you soon. Bye.